So I was hearing there about, you know, numerous complications and setbacks really that you had in that initial recovery period. Um, anything that is really valuable for the viewer to hear, tips or things that were unexpected in a way. Imagine, you know, there's other people facing this situation. Well, I think the most very valuable thing about all of this is the surgeons uh, never got to my sense of humour. Mm. Uh, so it is a sense of humour that carries one through, no matter what the difficulties are, mm -hmm. trying, difficult though it is, to see the funny side. For example, uh, when I first saw my chest, and other than doctors and nurses, not even my wife is allowed to see my chest now, uh, my comment uh, to the surgeon was, where's my nipple? My God, this is going to make breastfeeding very difficult now, because it took <laughs> me some time even to find my nipple. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, things like that. Um, the, the biggest uh, difficulty by far was the loss of the sense of balance. Yes. And that has taken, it's not perfect now, that has taken almost three years. And at first I'm sure my neighbours thought, there he is, going down the road, s s smashed out of his mind, drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I've, I've collected walking sticks. And an interesting thing about that is that at the age of 24, 50 odd years ago, mm. uh, I was in the Cotswolds and saw uh, a walking stick that I was attracted to. And I thought that would be handy when I'm an old man. <laughs> and for 50 years, it's been carried from house to house. So it's now part of my collection. And I've collected others that have got brass headings on, very useful for being out late at night if I need to use it or getting passage through crowds uh, and so on. So having to use a walking stick now, uh, I regard, I use it as a, almost a third leg if I have to step down. Mm. I don't really need it for walking, but it has taken a long, long time uh, to get the balance. It really has. Um, hearing, um, I went to a private clinic mm. to have some um, uh, electronic tests done to see whether the sound, whether equipment could be provided, I forget what they call it, on this side to transfer to that side. And it was very expensive, and I'm sure in many cases it's successful. And all the tests that were done indicated that it would be very useful to have something attached to this to carry the sound to the other receiver. In effect, it wouldn't stay in place, and the whole thing was a complete failure. But again, it was worth trying, and I'm sure it's successful for some people. Mm. Um, the other thing about radiotherapy, they say you won't lose your hair. Well, <laughs> and also hearing. Um, I have found that my hearing in that one good ear is slowly but surely deteriorating. Now, this is not to say it wouldn't have deteriorated at my age anyway. Mm. Um, and it might have deteriorated as I've stood in front of so many huge big orchestras at full volume. Yeah. But nevertheless, I do think it's radiotherapy has had an effect in that respect. Mm. Mm. So struggling with hearing, especially in crowded red restaurants, it's a most extraordinary thing to experience when sound is compacted into one ear. So as I'm talking now, yeah. I can hear you pretty well. Yeah. If I'm in a restaurant, I'm going to hear so many other sounds coming in. I can't hear the person in front of me. Uh, but I'm going through a process of finding out uh, what can be done to improve that with up-to-date modern hearing aids uh, mm. and so on. Mm. Um, so those have been the major problems. <laughs>